Welcome back to a special edition of On Your Side Tonight. No one has appeared on this program more than Steve Crump. His stories, perfect for our format, were often rooted in the ongoing struggle for fairness, inclusion, civil rights. We all learned something every time he stood on this set. As you know, we lost Steve to cancer last August. What you didn't know, up to his passing, Steve was working on another documentary. He had another lesson for us. This one, again, framed in the civil rights era. The picture inside tells the story of those who answered a call to join the struggle. They didn't do it because they were black, because they weren't. They joined because it was right. Tonight, we bring you Steve's final documentary. Social justice can be seen as an act designed to level the playing field. But in some instances, the goal of fairness has its painful consequences. Hello and welcome. I'm Steve Crump. The historic date lines of Philadelphia, Mississippi and Selma, Alabama are linked through racially charged homicides that happened during the 1960s. And here in the 21st century, we've seen it all over again in places like Charlottesville, Virginia, and right here in Louisville, Kentucky's Jefferson Square Park. More specifically, white individuals who lost their lives pursuing civil rights. Such heinous acts can bring hardship as well as heartbreak to individuals as well as families. It is important to keep their contributions relevant, contributions that many see as sacrifice across the color line. America's timeline linked to racial equality is clearly validated by stirring examples from committed individuals who stormed our nation's streets from city to city with a singular goal of improving the human condition. However, in a nation deeply conflicted at the crossroads of race, privilege, class, and education, history delivers the telling and brutal reminders of human hardship. I think during those days, we were doing what we felt and, and believed or conceived was the right thing to do. We wanted to desegregate lunch counters and restaurants. We wanted to create an open society, a good society. The right to vote. This is a national issue. It's not a Selma issue. It's not an Alabama issue. This is a national issue. And the opportunity to attend a college of one's choice. Harvey Gantt stepped from the car, surrounded by reporters and photographers from all over the country. Removing legal and limiting barriers to the disenfranchised required tenacity and perseverance, despite blatant obstacles often getting in the way. Racism is alive and well uh, in this day and time. Racism used to wear a white robe, the Klan. Today, racism wears an expensive Brooks Brothers suit. While Merle Evers offers one observation, another critical viewpoint feels the connection is linked to American geography. Mississippi viewed itself as the last bastion of the Confederacy, and the politicians played that up. Joan Mulholland was jailed in South Carolina and Mississippi as a sit-in protester, as well as being a freedom writer. As a member of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee known as SNCC, she rubbed shoulders with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and worked alongside NAACP Field Director Medgar Evers. Voter registration efforts designed to get more African Americans to the polls were carried out in the summer of 64, but the disappearance and murders of Andrew Goodman, Michael Swerner, and James Cheney loudly brought attention to the hardships faced by white activists. Even in Greensboro, North Carolina, one group was criticized for supporting African American students from North Carolina A&T and Bennett Colleges during sit-in demonstrations. Uh, at that time, the uh, Women's College of North Carolina, now UNC Greensboro, uh, at the, at the sit-in demonstration, of course, this scandalized <laughs> on many levels. I mean, not only just wh whites participating in a, 
ostensibly black demonstration, but white women, young white women and, and young black men. Uh, but that's really what the civil rights movement was about. It was part of this overall effort in the 1960s by this post-war generation. One year before Freedom Summer is still remembered as an American turning point. August 28, 1963 brought the historic March on Washington and put these civil rights luminaries in the space of President John Kennedy. It happened on the very same day they took the stage at the Lincoln Memorial. The occasion assisted in defining a country's destiny as well as American democracy. Mr. Burt Lancaster. We recognize that it is not only in America that the battle for freedom and dignity of peoples is being waged. The struggle toward freedom on the part of the previously subjugated is occurring in capitals and villages all over the world. Unity extending beyond the boundaries of race on such a historic day would be severely tested. The following month, on September 15, 1963, when the lives of four young girls were taken as the result of a Sunday morning bomb blast at Birmingham's 16th Street Baptist Church. We always knew that people would die, but Dr. King felt that he was the one most likely to die. Coming up next. And Martin rushed back from Atlanta and put out a national call. If you believe in democracy, come to Selma. If you believe in freedom, come to Selma. The Bloody Sunday Call, answered by preachers, when sacrifice across the color line continues.